All right. Maybe we'll turn the reverb down a little. How about that? That w did that all come out for you guys, or was that just in my headphones? The voice of God. That's probably what it sounded like. All right, welcome. I think I am on the internet. Okay. So at any time, I want to be really dramatic. And now he creates a new layer. Good to know. Good to know. So uh, on the right side of your screen today, on <laughs> today's stream, is, is the weather radar where I live. And so at, at any point, if I suddenly disappear, uh, best case, the internet's gone out, let's just say. <laughs> Who knows? But yeah, I will. Uh, we'll refresh that. Uh, somebody remind me every few minutes. Uh, I will refresh this window, and when the red gets here, the stream may be over. <laughs> All right. Welcome, everyone. Hello. Uh, my name is Kurt, and I am a comic book colorist. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Hey, Jason. How's it going? Welcome, uh, Davey and uh, Mr. Prime, let's just say. Um, but yeah, welcome to everybody that's coming in. Uh, today, until the power goes out, uh, I'm, I'm going to be coloring... Um, <laughs> I'm going to be coloring the cover here for the nasty... Um, this is for the trade, I believe. Uh, what are we seeing in the bottom right-hand corner? Uh, that would be impending doom. Is, that's what that is, all right? Don't worry about that too much. Just to, just to keep everybody in the loop. <laughs> no, that's the weather here. Yeah, it's, the weather here is ugly. Or about to be. But anyway, I love Adam's art. I got to do this whole series with him. And he really goes insane on the covers with all of this incredible detail that's so, like, subtle... And, uh, you know, it makes me not want to touch it. It's like, leave, can we just do this? Yeah, this is fine. It's totally fine. But look at this. Look at this. This is Adam at his finest. Anyway, just incredible detail. I love it. And so, uh, so my first thought, um, I, and, and uh, I got a little note uh, on uh, from uh, editorial, let's say. I think it was Tim, Tim Daniel. Editorial sounds cooler though. No, uh, Tim said uh, bright. Make it bright like the number one cover was, and the number one cover was very bright. I need to get that cover out here. Let's get the. Let's see, completed. I don't. We don't need it. I have to find it anyway. That would be terrible. Love all the hatching and pencil work. I know, I know, it's really, really good. So uh, I'll explain uh, for anybody that happens happens to be new around here. Probably not. But here are the inks. Uh, they are on a transparent layer. Okay, and, and I made them that way because of the mysterious button right here uh, somewhere uh, that says convert brightness to opacity. Very, there goes the thunder. I better hurry. Uh, you can also find that on the edit menu over here. Um, and then we have the base, which doesn't have anything on it. It's just white. And then we have the flats, which have nothing to do with color, but just selections. So this is for selecting purposes. Uh, I have my wand set to refer to... Um, actually, this got screwed up somehow. I'm not sure how to... That's how you do that. Okay. So, um, uh, selection for four referred layers is a weird way of putting this, but it just means that um, the wand is going to select from the flats layer, which is currently set as the reference layer. Okay. 
What's up, Mr. Powerlifting? How's it going? No work, but got to lock the wife out of the room. <laughs> All right. So, oh, yes. And down here, uh, these layers, I'm just honest. We're going to delete these layers, uh, except for this one. Yeah, so I'll use this for a selection probably at some point. Um, I haven't adjusted that the way I normally would. But uh, anyway, so he wants it to be bright and feel bright. So that means we're going to start dark. <laughs> you can't have something bright if it's also um, if it's already bright. Well, or that's my theory anyway. But no, um, he wants a local color. You know, I did a, a another uh, cover for this. I'm gonna have to uh, dig all these out at some point uh, for this stream, probably. But um, it was very dark in the theater, and it wasn't a lot going on. Um, it was cool and dramatic, but to differentiate that, you know, this cover from the other like moodier cover, this one's gonna be a little bit more. Uh, local local colors recognizable character colors and all that stuff and welcome everybody that is coming in so there's kind of a floor and on this it's actually pretty high as far as how dark i want this to be because i do not want to stomp on this detail and if i start lowering this too much even on your pretty bright monitors this is already starting to, Adam's going, no, wait, what? You can't see the, the thing with the, yeah, so yeah, we don't want to do that. So we want to start like here, which is like a mid-tone at brightest, I think. And I'm just going to, I'm in a painty mood today, so, um, did I not choose a color? No, I did not. I'm going to do this on a layer on top just because it's easier to edit this color later. And I think I want to get a little bit more blue in here. I don't really want any selections right now, actually. I just want to do... I want to do this. It's loosey goosey, which I don't, I don't do a lot of loosey goosey. That's how I'm feeling today. How are y'all? How are things? How are things going? I'll tell you what I'm going to want on this as a selection. I just need... All of this to be... Sorry, I'll subject verb, subject verb. I will uh, try to articulate. I want to get rid of all of the, everything except the foreground and the background, I want to split into a selection because I'm going to be constantly, constantly pushing and pulling on this, um, basically. But I want to include this row. Whoops. You finally got some work to keep you busy. That's good. You didn't miss whatever announcement you were going to make. Announcement? 
Did I did I say I was gonna make an announcement and forget forget that? Um let's include this row. My back just popped. Yeah, sorry if I seem off today, it's because I feel off today. My my I feel like my um been doing a lot of unwinding of my body in school. I've been in massage school, so I'm getting a lot of massages. And I swear it's like it all reflects into your brain. And I feel like my brain is mushy right now. It eventually uh, will feel better, but I think your brain has to rewire a little bit. Because it changes the tension going into that hole at the base of your skull. That's my theory, anyway. All right. Yeah. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to make a new layer. And uh, we'll fill it with that. We'll make it dark so I can see it better over here. So now, anytime I want to do... That I can just control click. Is that control? I can control click this image and that will let me uh, select that. And then we can invert it real fast like that. Happy joy joy. You said there was something I was going to tell us? Oh, yeah. I had a I have a job already <laughs> like lined up. Um another job. Like this one's not enough. Um But yeah, that's probably it. Hey Angela, how's it going? No, uh I'm going to continue to color for the foreseeable future. Um I like it and people um uh seem to like what I'm doing. And that's a good match. <laughs> and I don't I don't want to lose that. And um but uh, I had my uh, I had my first interview like a talking interview with the owner at a local spa on uh last week. And then um the next thing to do was to actually give a massage to the owner so she sees what your you know what it well, what it feels like. And um yep. That all worked out. I am a massage wizard. <laughs> Working on it anyway. So yeah, that was exciting. So I, I, I kind of like the idea of... Um, Yeah, I've never really thought about this this way. So, I did this sort of, um, oh, by the way, this is how long I wait to, like, give you guys secrets. Secrets. It's like, wait a minute. Four seconds later. Guys, guys, guys. Anyway. By having, like, a, like, the deep blue fading into the red and not concerning myself with going in or outside any lines initially. Like, it was just what people do on paintings all the time. Just fill the the background with, like, a gradient and build everything on top of it. Unlike canvas paintings in the real world. And it automatically gets you kind of a matching ambient shadows on your characters. I feel, I feel like I'm, I'm the last person to figure this out. <laughs> it's like, well, wait a minute. That's why everybody does that. Anyway. Sorry, that was a little revelation there. So, yeah, like I kind of like the idea that um, we just sort of loosely bounce all that red up into here. And we'll just use this as like a base. 
And this will give us like a really, I would assume, like a nice rich uh, shadows here, you know? I like it. I like it. And I feel like there's some things that I just know I'm going to have. Like, this is going to glow. So let's just, why not go ahead and put that in here? And same thing here. And with red, I'm being careful not to like obliterate the edge because like even a red glow to look red is pretty dark. Unless you do like the, the lightsaber thing like this. But I didn't do a lot of that on this book and I don't really think it works but anyway I I'm also you know what before I'm also I'm noticing in the lighting so we've got the big projector uh in the back that's gonna be really bright So let's establish that now because that's going to make everything else easier. And there are rim lights everywhere. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but there's like rim lights on him. There's rim lights on the jacket, their hair and everything. And so let's do the rim light first. I say let's like you guys are helping me with this. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um... And then we'll come back with the local color. I'm just, I'm doing everything differently this time than what I normally do. Um, I don't know why. It's that kind of day. So. Let's play with this mode. This is, uh. Add glow mode in clip. I don't really know what the difference is between add and add glow. It's probably brighter or glowier or something. Going out on a limb. And that gets us a nice look at Adam's beautiful textures over here. Uh, I'm going to put a mask. Uh, whoops. I'm going to put a mask on this layer. And paint some of this out. I think. I don't know why. I have a tendency to look at OBS over here instead of... <laughs> Instead of the little thumbnail I gave you guys, I think it's actually smaller. Like, I want to see it's even smaller. And this is a, an overlay to kind of warm all of this up and make it less gray. And I'm wondering, does this just need to go all the way up? Yes, I think it does. Or... This is a good thing about the mask. You can play around with it.
Hello, welcome everyone that's coming in. How are you? How are things? All right, so... Can I use this same color? Does it work as a... Yeah, I think it does. You know what? I don't think I want to use this glowy. I just want to paint this on a normal layer, I think. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to label this, actually, as a realm light. There we go. The other reason that I am doing this on a separate layer is because in a little bit, if I want to do something like select that layer, then I can use it to, uh, I can basically paint on the rim light without, you know, losing any of it. When you use uh, your airbrush and clip, it's heavy. Um, I think this is a default airbrush. These are my settings. Uh, the brush size is uh, big and the opacity is 100. The hardness is um, right there. One of five. And the density is 100. Uh, everything is just pressure. I'm not pressing very hard. And this I'm really considering more of a reflection of what's happening above him because when you if you think about the Fresnel effect which I talk about a lot like the 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 more uh, open that angle is <laughs> my wrist just popped the more open that angle is from the light source to the camera uh, the more reflective that surface is going to be you know you can think of the top of his hand as being like a mirror reflecting what's above him so even though the light is quote unquote behind him, you have like a nice reason to justify a bright light right there. Do, 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 do. What else? What else? So we have this hand over here. Uh, 
Excuse me. Yeah, I think this will be an interesting experiment because basically I'm just realizing, so we're going to light the whole scene from behind and then light the whole scene from the front. <laughs> and and where it meets is where it'll be fun and interesting maybe. Little bit denser along the top than the sides will um will definitely make things look rounder. So I'm going a li even on these curves on top, a little bit r darker in places, or pressing harder and then falling off, pressing harder and falling off, pressing harder and falling off. And those little ridges and things will make it look organic and natural and more like hair than just like like all the way around the same color. The other concept I'm sort of trying to apply here is like taking that bright light and just, um, uh, Bob Ross used to talk about spreading it around the canvas. And it, and it really ties it all together when you've got a little bit of it spread out. You know, I talk a lot about focal points and, you know, the brightest thing or the darkest thing or whatever, but there's not really any rules there, but um, you definitely want to um, to avoid being so on the nose sometimes with um, your your focal points is don't don't be afraid to spread that around. And this really wouldn't get much of this light because they're kind of blocking a lot of it. In your massage course, have I learned if it helps with tinnitus? Or uh, I was told to have deep tissue work on my neck. I want to try, but I'm not a fan of people touching me. Not, not uh, being a fan of people touching you um, is a bit of an issue with massage. A bit, a bit. But, you know, here's, here's honestly, like, quick, quick tangent, because I think that uh, this will be helpful. This is what I'm realizing is, like, how we're actually wired up, okay? Like... Let me draw this guy real quick. Oh, he's a power lifter. Power lifter. The neck is here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Fix that real quick. The pecs, you got big, big guy. Okay. This no longer. That's just his clavicles, actually. Now. All right. So you get the idea. All right. And you go to the doctor, and the doctor um, whose specialty is right here looks right here 
and says, oh, no, we don't know what's going on or whatever. And the problem is because of some bit of something that's being pulled on right here. But what the doctor doesn't know is, you know, that old injury you had in the shoulder pulls over here maybe, and that creates this tension here. But then this shoulder is tight too, and so there's a bit of a thing that goes up and it wraps around and grabs this clavicle and then pulls on this ear. And, <laughs> like, this to me is what I think is wrong. Like, 90% of conditions, like, this is happening. Like, you know, fascia in the body is so misunderstood. And it wraps around every single cell. <laughs> okay? There are no, um, what's the word, exceptions. The bones... Like, everything, unbroken web, okay? So any joint can tie around any joint in the body. And it's just not something that is appreciated in the West at all. <laughs> the Eastern medicines and the, 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 the yoga folks and the, I don't even know, like the, you know, the five, six thousand year old uh, meridians and all that, like, They've been trying to explain this to us for, like, thousands of years. Um, it comes down to relaxing the big systemic tension patterns of your body, you know? And, you know, it's like just another quick example, and I know this is off subject. People look at delts and go, okay, you know, this pulls to here, and this pulls to here, and that pulls to here, and this pulls to here. Great. This also pulls across here. This one pulls to here. This loves to wrap around the clavicles and then, like, jump to your serratus and tie all this up, you know, which pulls on this hip and then makes you limp. And the problem is, like, you didn't stretch this enough. <laughs> like... There are people watching this right now going, this guy's lost his mind. He's crazy. Like, this is how our bodies work. Like, my, my plan after school, one of the many things, is to teach this to people. Because it's very simple. These are very simple ideas. And there's all sorts of tension patterns that run across and through and down. And, and they're not appreciated. You know, it's like if you've got a bit of a ringing because of a vibration that's happening between your right ankle and your left knee, you know, the doctor's not going to look for that. <laughs> so anyway, I'll get off my soapbox. <laughs> but yeah, man, like think outside the box, you know. Get in, figure out what deep body patterns you have that are, uh, you know, where are you sore? Where are you tight? Like, you know, I know it sounds nuts. It might sound nuts to some, but it's been, uh, it's been proven out to me in school, like what I had sort of intuited out. But anyway, so we were coloring, <laughs> sorry, before I got off of my rant about muscles. Um, oh, I was doing, um, I was doing rim lights. That's where we were. In martial arts, we learn there's a point on the bicep you can press really hard on someone to make their knees buckle. It only makes sense in the context you're talking about. Exactly, exactly. It's like when you, and I'm exaggerating this, I'm sure, but it's like when you can create these points that like effectively twist one part this way 
and then you know the other part into it this way you end up with some really really painful things that are like <laughs> pulling on all of the major centers here because your lats attach you know way up here all the way down to your hips it's not like it's a mystical connection or something it's like the muscles huge so yeah absolutely But yeah, it's it's gonna have to be some kind of like animated thing. I've 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 pretty much resigned myself to that. Um, it's the only way like it's the only way I can show what I'm trying to show. It I think it has to be in motion. Um. So so it'll be a fun thing to learn. Uh, I'm just gonna probably I thought about doing it in in. Uh, the new procreate dreams initially but right now it is undercooked like really undercooked like you can't reorder layers or something like i was like oh it's at that point so yeah i feel like they they got a little ahead of themselves on that They're like don't worry guys you'll be able to change blending modes and the next time around or whatever But I already know clip and it's got a timeline for animation already and all that, so it just seems to make sense. <laughs> I'm gonna be painting over so much of what I'm doing, but I wanna I've never really tried one exactly like this, so we'll figure out if it makes any sense together. I also tend to, just to save yourself some headache, is like make the brush as big as the thing that you're doing. Like, I think about like this shape, if I press all the way, is about that size. So if, if I make my brush that size, then I've saved myself some hassle there, you know? But. What I'm hoping happens here is all of this lighting that I'm about to start painting over, that it just adds a lot of nice uh, texture and helps to build up um, the light from the other side here, hopefully. Recently found your channel. I've been loving how you're, how not to color. I've been trying to keep your lessons in mind when I'm practicing. Yeah, that that's the old like. Of course, I would put it in negative, <laughs> but but yeah, I, I appreciate it. That that series is is uh, it still gets a few views. Happy to see that it's still still helping people.
You've been getting line art on Pinterest. You recommend some other ways. You can probably find like higher quality stuff, um, like on DeviantArt or uh, uh, Heritage Auctions is, is would have very high quality scans. Because what you're getting on Pinterest, unless you're upscaling it, is going to be very low resolution. Uh, comic art fans website. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, let's do a weather update. I just heard the thunder rumble again. Okay, now, yeah, we're moving into the, uh, <laughs> moving into the yellow bands now. Yeah, again, if I suddenly disappear, the uh, power probably went out. Yeah, this is basically going to be more like a value underpainting than I'm realizing the more I'm looking at this. I'm just doing it with colors instead of black and white. <laughs> The young Mick Jagger is really enjoying the popcorn. Exactly. A lot less detail on this area because it's really just meant to be, uh, you know, back, background. Background in that it's not foreground. I get that it's in the foreground. You get what I'm saying. The background element is in not important. 
are not as important. All right, now Let's see if I can figure out. I think. There we go. Yeah, so I'm using a hard light layer on top of all of this. This? Sorry, I was list. Um, and I'm, I'm picking pretty much the local color uh, of, of what it is. And um, through the magic of hard light mode, it, it works pretty well for that. And... Praise hard light. That's right. Um, sorry, I am. I needed to see. Yeah, I need to see what I did on this cover. Yeah, so he's a little bit grayer. And gray, I'm imagining, is going to be really cool on this image because it's pretty warm in this area. So let's see, is this going to... Or does that need to be normal mode? Yeah, I think I do like this. So, the plan was to get a pretty pure white light from the front anyway, because we want this to uh, be local colors on the characters. And so, by going toward that local color under everything else we've done, that all kind of works. It needs to be on top of that light, though. And so I'm thinking as far as from a light source standpoint, it's just dead on from the front, which is going to kind of hit the middle of everything toward us.
And just along this edge it's facing up, this will make it look like it's curving around instead of just stopping, <laughs> like, kind of like it does now. Yeah, he looks cool. All right. And his gloves are like a warm brown kind of color. So I'm really just putting it everywhere the light is not <laughs> and where the uh, the deepest shadows are. I'm still kind of leaving that cool for the most part. Power is going out. Yeah, I'm I'm expecting the power to go out any second. Because that. <laughs> Let me refresh this. Yeah. So I'm like in that region. So I'm hoping it kind of skims. It's not it doesn't seem to be skimming though. <laughs> All right. Oh well. That was. Yeah, I'm doing all the experiments. So I'm wondering if an o overlay also would probably work well with that too. Yeah, it kind of does. Because overlay avoids the darks and lights, so that's also a good way of handling that. Get you a good base anyway. To sort of play around with. Stop coloring the map in those colors. Yeah, I gotta stop. I gotta get away from these reds. I forgot to do the popcorn in the air. 
But yeah, I just went under that and uh Oh, also, she has fingers over here. I see that now. <laughs> totally missed that. We're getting there, we're getting there. All right, what other tricks do we need to do? Um. So I'm going to try something. Uh, I've got this light that I put on everything earlier, which is really just sort of the ambient light from the projector. And I want to select that light. Make sure I don't have anything selected. Yeah, control click the layer. And then on a layer on top, If I do like that, does that come? I'm seeing if this works the way I want it to work. Sort of. Sort of. But yeah, it's a different light I want to use. I was trying to use it as a as a selection, as a selection for something else. But that didn't do what I expected it to do. So we'll do something else. Yeah, I like experimenting with like technical stuff on covers like this. Because the cover itself, the art is interesting and kind of do interesting things. So I'm going to try something else. I want to make a few selections. And... I want it to be brighter. How much brighter? About that brighter? I want it to be cool. Cool. It's got too much red in it. Cool. That cool. Okay. So we're going to call this cool. Uh, cool, which is a word. Look it up. That just came out like that guy Thor and all those YouTube shorts. It's totally a thing. Look it up. His voice is down here somewhere, though. Mine doesn't work. Get that low easily. Look it up. You guys know what I'm talking about? If you don't, None of that made any sense. Anyway.
Coolth is one of your favorite words now, right up there with extruder and tuberosity. Tuberosity is a great word. We have learned so many tuberosities at school. <laughs> And I'm always confusing. Is this a condyle? Is this a, a tuberosity? Is this a, 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 a what do they call them? A, a stylo, a styloid processes? Yeah, I've learned more anatomy than I wanted to know. <laughs> And Jason, is the here it comes, is that here comes the levels adjustment? Dude, you can't. It's hard to beat for this, dude. It's hard to beat because in the brighter parts, it's moving it toward white. Oh, here comes the storm. Oh, yeah, the thunder, yeah. No, I, I have sort of fallen in love with levels adjustments for this, but this is precisely why. In all the places that it's brighter, it pushes it toward white. And in all the shadows, you get that like rich ambient color, the, the, of the, 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 the cooler color in this case. And so anyway, this is why I have become um, to love levels adjustments for lighting lately, in case anybody was wondering. And I'm also trying not to get carried away and over-render all of this stuff. But it's so fun. Yeah, I'm actually definitely going to... We're going to calm all this down a little bit. It is a little busy, but we can blend like one side of these lines and that'll like calm it down. I like uh, David Finch's anatomy style, and this one is called The Other Muscle. <laughs> I wish, I wish that worked in my classes, but it, um, it does not, unfortunately. Yeah, it, it can get pretty crazy with the, um, like one, one of the ways that our instructor tests us one of the instructors is uh, they'll actually like just have us go into a room uh, with one of the uh, like skeletal things skeleton model things or whatever and um, you have to draw like a, a bone from the bone pile and a muscle from the muscle pile <laughs> like little pieces of paper and then just you have to tell, for every muscle, we have to know the name and location, obviously, but it's like the origin, the insertion points, the nerve that innervates it, and the action that it does. And there's a lot of muscles. The thing is, though, like, I understand why we have to know them. So I don't really uh, complain about it. We just do have to know a lot of them.
And I'm just picking colors from like the surrounding area for these people that are back here because, you know, they're not meant to like jump off the page or anything. I don't want to hide them either. But if you're trying to figure out, oh, what color should XYZ be? Like, what does it need to do there? Does it need to blend with its surroundings? Does it need to stand out? Does it need to form a pattern of some kind? All right. Hmm, what else? Oh, the blue on her jacket. I knew I was missing something. And same thing on him. Oh, and the popcorn bucket. I'm missing all sorts of details. <laughs> and I want to make sure that... For continuity's sake, it's the same popcorn bucket as the last cover. Let's see, green with white stripes. Mm, the design on the bucket is not, maybe it's not the same. I don't actually want to use that color because it's too close to the green on his shirt, which I want to keep unique, I think. I'll put a little green on here. <laughs> I just realized he has a straw in his mouth. And popcorn stuck in his teeth. 
I guess you would call that teeth. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're coming into the home stretch on this thing. Questions, comments, concerns? I apologize for all the missed streams lately, but... My schedule has been insane. Is there going to be a member stream this month or not until April? Um, it'll probably be April. Yeah, I think it will be April. All right, so the last thing that I want to do on this is I actually want to spread a little bit more of this brightness around a little bit. so that it's not quite so top-heavy in the values. Yeah, just to get a bit more of like a kind of a triangle, not a triangle shape, but yeah, or, or a little bit more structure like like this. Um Sorry. So I think, uh, yeah, I'm going to put a quick uh, tone curve or a, a curves adjustment on this. And brighten it up a little. About right there.
what are you looking to do with the curves adjustment? You'll never guess. <laughs> no, it's just playing with the contrast. Um, before, after, before, after. It's brightening everything that's bright a little. It's a little intense, actually. Now that I'm looking at it. So I'm going to do like, like half strength. This is a quick way to like tone that down. Yeah, it's a little overcooked. But yeah, somewhere like that. Um, Just brighter brights. Not so much darker darks. I slightly, slightly adjusted those just a little bit. Um, It's actually just hitting me that I think if the seats were redder, that his eyes would actually pop a little bit more. And so, I think I will try that. And I do think I like that. Yeah. That was just an overlay layer. It's weird that that works. My instinct would be that his eyes would appear more red if they were the only red on the page. I I call it like uh, I don't know what it's called. I call it like an echo almost. It's like if uh, let's see to simplify this. Um. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Well, just using like what's on this as an example. Like this is, come on, there we go. This is mostly like this. There's a lot of dark stuff on this. But anyway, um, if this is your um. This is meant to just be an analog for this. If if you've got something that is like completely unique, it will like from a like what do you call it? Just from a pure eyeball standpoint, like yes, it will really, really stand out. Um but it's almost like that's a perfect world and there's also nothing else interesting that you want to pull forward in that image if you were to go that route. And so it's like by by having this like it sort of feels like it's floating out in space. Like it's disconnected from the rest of the image because well like you said there's nothing else like it on the image in any direction so it's going to feel it's going to almost feel out of place, you know, it, it, to me like if you were going like completely like that. But if I add, you know, and what I, like I said, like what I call like an echo for that, it belongs a little bit more. You know what I mean? It's like all of a sudden it's different, but it's not that different, you know? And so it's like you're you're pulling someone out of the crowd on the canvas and elevating that, you know, color, let's say. I don't know if that's a good analogy or not. But without the crowd, it's like, do they fit in this room? You know, you know what I mean? So it, it totally depends on the vibe. Like sometimes this is what you want, you know? Um, but yeah, I think with this, I, I do think it looks better with that red because, um, one, it's just richer. Like it makes the blues look bluer. It makes the skin tones look more like skin tones. Like it, it helps everything, uh, that was a little too just desaturated, I think, which it, it, I mean, it works. But this just gives it a little bit of a punch, you know? Um, another awesome piece of work. Marvel and DC need to stop sleeping on you and give me some work. I don't I don't think they I don't think they know who I am too much. DC does. DC uh, I, I I've done a couple of things uh for them. 
um, writing another artist's coattails. Thank you, Rebecca Isaacs. <laughs> That's how DC knows me. Oh, they say guy Rebecca likes. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, I dig it. I was, I was trying to debate whether or not I wanted to do, like, a, throw a little bit about that lighter color, like, back here. I don't, I don't, it doesn't hurt anything. Yeah, you can actually see that stuff a little bit better back there. Again, it's not like crazy intense or anything, but... Yeah, you can see what's going on a little bit more. But anyway, I really like this. Let's see what this looks like. Uh, I didn't have the CMYK preview on. It darkens a little more than I would like. It's probably because of this curve. Let's push that back up a little bit. Yeah, the rest of that should be fine. I'm going to look at this in Photoshop also. Bear with me a moment. Um, let's see. Here we go. All right. So here's Photoshop. Uh, there we go. Ooh, see, this is what I mean. I was a, I was a little nervous about that blue being like, I don't think that's going to work out that way. And it doesn't. It's not even close. Look at this. I mean, it's fine. I'm going to turn it. I'm going to adjust it a little bit. But this is why I don't trust clip completely this is not the result that i saw here did i just miss it was i not paying attention let's see it shifts but it doesn't shift quite that much yeah neither one of them look as good as they did. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave that on and leave CMYK mode on. Oh, it's this layer. I didn't mean to leave that on. Let me turn that down. That will fix it, probably. There we go. Yeah, I did actually didn't intend to... I did that as a test and then Turn it down. So yeah, now we get a little bit more of that purple. That is way better. Way better. And... Let's see. Yeah, now I like it. Now I'm happy. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, as always. Uh, do, if you want to support this channel and what I'm doing, uh, click a button somewhere. Any button. Um, but check the links in the description. I have courses on coloring with Clip Studio and Photoshop and Procreate and all sorts of things. And uh, hope and, and the weather held out. We survived. So I'm going to get off here and uh, get away from all these electronics. And I will see you all next time.